Hey everybody, it's Mike from Reno Propulsion Labs. Uh, today we're going to do our full review of the TLT board runner. So this is the TLT runner. Um, it's a lot different than most of the PVs that you've seen. It's different than a one wheel, different than a unicycle, different than an e-scale. Um, little bad story on this thing. So this was originally invented by a man in uh, Israel. Uh, his name is Yal Alani. Uh, he created it back in 2008. Uh, it's when he started his company. Um, he started making little boards like this and eventually it turned into what you see here in front of me today. So the best way I can describe this is it reminds me of a e-skate mixed with an electric unicycle. So the nice thing is, is it's got suspension, it's got the one solid wheel in the back, but you still control it with a throttle like you do on an electric unicycle. This thing's huge, obviously. It's tough to fit here on my desk. Um, let me see if I can drop this guy down so you can see a little bit better. But right over here, you've got a thumb throttle. It's activated right now, so I'm not gonna hit the throttle or it'll take off and fly off the desk. And you even have a brake over here. So I've been riding this thing for about 100 miles, had for about a month now. I've taken it on all kinds of different terrain. I've taken it off-road, single track trails, double track trails. I've taken it in sand. I've taken it in snow. I've taken it just on regular pavement. I've taken it through loose dirt, through a lot more hard packed dirt. And I'm going to give you kind of the rundown of what I think about it and whether or not I think you should buy it. So first I want to go over the design. So it's got a really interesting design to it. If you look up here in the front, you've got your entire steering mechanism right here. So you've got two arms and they go right in here into this kind of gooseneck attachment. And they just slide into place right here with nothing really holding them in on the arms. So you've got this gooseneck attachment that comes back with these bars, a nice long uh, cross member here. And then these guys just go into place. Inside of there, you've got grease pack to keep it from, you know, rusting and binding up and that type of thing. Then the whole thing is held together. If you look underneath it here, you've got these little tie, um, tie rods, and that's what holds everything together. When you get a tilt board, these guys aren't attached. You got to put them on, and then you take these little bolts down here at the bottom, or these nuts, crank them down. One thing that I did, so after about 50 miles of riding, I noticed one of the bolts had kind of started to back off. They're nylon insert bolts, or um, they're nylon insert nuts. So they're supposed to hold on a little bit better, but there was no Loctite. So I went and threw a little Loctite on there. Haven't had an issue since. Um, and I've put another 50 or so miles on it since then. They're still on there pretty tight. A couple of things that you'll notice too, I just want to point this out. Um, I added these GoPro mounts up here. These specifically are for uh, shred lights. So the idea is I can put some, some shred lights up here. I've got a tail light here, and then I got two in the front for headlights and it will pop up and it'll shoot straight forward. So just a quick aside, uh, if you click the link below in the description and use coupon code Reno wheel, you can save 10% off your order of shred lights, helps the channel, helps you, saves you some money. So I'd suggest doing it, shred lights are great. I should actually have a review on those coming up here in a, about a month, month and a half. So. Anyways, you've got your steering mechanism up front. It's a really solid steering mechanism. I think that's one of the most ingenious things of this entire wheel is you've got this steering that's almost like, it reminds me of very loose trucks on an e-skate. So it's like having your trucks in there, in there, they're just super loose. The nice thing though is once you get up to speed, it stabilizes and you almost get to the point where you're kind of struggling to get the thing to turn back and forth. So. I'm not struggling as it's tough, but struggling in that it, you know, keeps you upright and you just need to lean into it. So kind of like you'd lean into a one wheel or an electric unicycle when you're at speed, you got to lean harder than when you're going slow. So that's one of the big things that I've noticed. Um, and that's probably my favorite part of this entire design, aside from the three wheels. The fact that it's got three wheels helps you get over pretty much any type of terrain. Like I said, I've had no issue in like heavy snow, heavy uh, sand, that type of stuff going through because all three of your wheels just hold you down to the ground. But I'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, talking a little bit more about the design, um, the one downside to this 
is it's not super portable. It's, it fits in the back of my car, no problem. Just lift it up. You hold it here by this handle and by this handle. So the ergonomics aren't too bad. Uh, getting it up here, I actually lift it on the front, but uh, it, it's nothing crazy. The total weight's about 74 pounds, so it's pretty hefty. But the downside is you can't use this very easily as like a commuter type of rig or something like that. You're going to struggle finding a place to park it in your office or taking it to a store is going to be tough because it, it's going to be large and, and take up a lot of room. Uh, the other downside too, when it comes to that is the ergonomics with the handle is you will have to have a handle in your hand the whole time you're riding it. So on something like a one wheel, you can easily carry, you know, two bags of groceries with you. Like your unicycle, you can kind of do the same thing. This, you at least have to have one hand available so you can control it. So the one thing that I found is kind of a downside um, is the fit and finish on this. So this is more of a prototype model that he sent me. It's still in design. It's You can purchase it right now like this, but the design is only going to get better. But give me just a second here and I'm going to point out a couple of the areas uh, where I noticed some fit and finish issues. So we're going to come in here up close. The biggest thing that I've noticed is there's just some kind of sloppy welds. They're very strong welds, but they're kind of sloppy. Right up here, the hook on the top and the hook at the bottom, kind of messy. Um, and then back in here, there's some more where you can tell it was definitely welded at somebody's house. However, they are very strong. I haven't had any issues, haven't had anything come loose or move or, or anything crazy like that. I also noticed... There's some type of overspray here around the tire. I think that the uh, rim was painted and the tire may not have been taken off the uh, rim when that happened. But again, not a big issue, just some minor fit and finish when it comes to that. Now on the opposite side, it does have these awesome machined aluminum uh, foot pads in the front and then another one back here in the rear. It's got nice grip tape. I've had no issues at all with my feet coming off, coming loose or sliding around on there once my feet are on the grip tape. I also really like how it's uh, die cut out the TLT on there. And one thing I noticed is if you look under here, you can actually see that it says board, but they never cut out that portion of the grip tape. And I'm not quite sure why. So I may go back and do that myself. Um, you can also see that it's got like a cool hexagon pattern too. So I may do that too. All right. Just a little bit more background on this. So um, Alani created this, like I said, back in 2008, he's been kind of refining it ever since. One thing that I learned, not from him, but I learned, um, just looking on the internet, it looks like there was a company called YX1 that created a board that was very similar to this one. And I kind of started doing some research. Apparently what happened was Alani had tried to get a manufacturer to buy off on this and start to sell it mainstream. The problem was is it went through a factory in China and they had tried to get everything set up and they didn't get enough pre-orders in. So the manufacturer dropped out on him. So he went back to just kind of doing these on his own. If you, I'll, I'll post a picture of the uh, YX1 right here. And if you look at the YX1, it's, it's got a lot better fit and finish. It's the one thing that I've noticed though is this has a lot of features that that YX1 didn't have. Let's go over a little bit of the performance on it. So I did a range test. Uh, you can click on the link below in the description to see the range test. Uh, I was able to get 26 miles on it. It was a cooler day, but the uh, weather was about 50, 55 degrees when I started. Ended, at, ended at about 60 to 65 degrees, which was pretty warm for uh, our part of the world this year. So we didn't have any real issues with uh, with, with the cold affecting the battery. One thing is I am a little bit heavier of a rider. I weigh about 230 with all my gear on. So we were able to get 26 miles, which is pretty respectable. And that was riding around road, riding a little bit off road, stop and go in the city. I actually stopped and drove back to my house at one point, unplugged the battery, drove it back to my house, plugged it back in, kept going. And I got an entire day of riding out of it. So. It was, it was a, a solid, you know, a solid show. And my thing is, I want to be able to make sure that I've got enough range that when I go riding with my one wheel group, that I can keep up with the one wheel GTs. This will keep up with the one wheel GT. It's not going to keep up with the float wheel, but one wheel GT is kind of the gold standard on range right now for that type of mobility. Obviously, I'm not going to go out and uh, ride with a bunch of uh, Bagode Master Pros and keep up with them, but 
there's not a whole lot that uh, you could ride that would keep up with that. So kind of is what it is when it, when it comes to that. But the range on this was, was pretty solid. As far as speed goes, definitely faster than a one wheel GT. I was able to hit 35 on it, no issues. Uh, one of the nice things is you don't have to worry about nose diving. So you can crank the throttle down all the way and just keep going. And eventually you'll just hit a limit and that'll be your top speed. You're not going to go any faster, but you're also not going to go flying off the front of it, which is nice. So another thing I want to talk about is the geometry. One thing I noticed was a lot of people when they first got on it, mostly one wheel riders had some stability trouble when they were standing still. But that was pretty much alleviated once you actually start moving on the board. Once you start going, this rear wheel acts almost like a gyroscope and it has forces pushing out in each direction, which helps keep you upright and helps to keep those front wheels from letting you lean back and forth. You can still lean. You can lean into turns. You lean like you would on a skateboard or on a uh, one wheel. And all in all, I thought it was a really fun riding experience. It's a great feel. You feel like you're surfing. You feel like you're, you know, skateboarding, but you can do it on almost any terrain, which is awesome. So I'm going to throw the cost, uh, this board and uh, the other two boards that they make. Um, should be a picture up here now. So this board costs $2,500, free shipping in the States. This is their high-end electric board. They have a lower-end electric board called the uh, TLT Cruiser. Great board, smaller battery. Uh, I believe the top speed on that one is around 20 to 25 miles per hour, which you'll still be able to keep up with your one-wheel groups and that type of stuff, but it's a smaller board with a smaller battery, and it's got smaller wheels, and it's meant more primarily for riding on-road. They also have a gas-powered version of this that's got 186 cc I don't know the brand. I want to say it's a Honda engine, but it could be a like a knockoff Honda engine. And there's a lot of videos of them riding it, but right now on their website, it says it's not available. A lot of people have commented, have posted a couple videos of this thing. A lot of the things people say are, it looks like it was built in somebody's garage. Everybody said the original one wheel was built in someone's garage. At least it looked that way. And it was. Kyle built that in his garage. And then he turned it into a big company. And I've got an original V1 one wheel and I still love riding it to this day. It's a great board. Kind of like this. This is, this is a blast. It's a ton of fun to ride. And honestly, I kind of like the, the look that someone will look at me and go, did you make that thing yourself? Even if I didn't. And I'll tell them, you know, no, it's, I bought it like this. And, uh, but it, it, it really is an eye turner. I've had more people stare at me while I'm riding this thing. And I'm the type of person that enjoys that. The second thing that people look at, they say, is that thing any, is that safe? Am I going to get killed while I'm riding it? And if you look at these examples, it's never safe to ride a PEV. Riding a one wheel, you could, you know, break your shoulder, you could get killed, you could get hurt. There's lots of things that can happen. And electric unicycle, just a few months ago, uh, somebody crashed in Melbourne, Australia and lost their life too, which it's tragic, but that's a risk that we take when we're riding these things. And on this, Personally, I feel that it's safer than a one wheel and safer than an electric unicycle because you can't nosedive, because you've got three points of contact with the ground. You can still get hurt on it, but you can get hurt on anything. And I don't think there's much on this that would cause an issue. Um, I will go over in a minute um, some issues that I've had with the brake, but I think that's something that could be very easily resolved. One of the last things that people talk about is they say that it's too big, not portable enough, too heavy. And if you weigh this compared to even my Bagode Master, which is a three-year-old electric unicycle, this thing's about 10 pounds lighter. This is, I believe, 74 pounds. I uh, weighed it. I will put the correct weight in the uh, video here, but it's not that heavy. It does have issues with portability, but in my mind, this, and this is kind of a segue to my next topic here, is this is kind of like buying a dirt bike. You don't buy a dirt bike because you're going to try to commute on it. You don't buy a dirt bike to go run and get groceries. You buy a dirt bike because you want to go out, you want to ride out in the, out in the sand, out in the dirt, and you want to have a good time. You're probably going to throw it in the back of a truck that gets 10 miles a gallon, drive it out somewhere, drop it off, and you're going to go ride it. And that's where I think this thing shines. Some of the best places I rode this we're in the sand, we're in the snow, we're in really loose terrain, and it did great off-road. It had some trouble on single tracks. That's one of my biggest attractors is it's just a little wide for a single track. 
But you run into that same issue with your mountain board, your off-road e-skate type of thing too, is it's probably about four to five inches wider than that. But if you get real tight single tracks, you're going to have issues on it. And that's just because of the width. And there's nothing that can be done about that. But I would say if you're the type of person who just wants to go out one day, you know, throw this thing in the back of your car, go drive to the meetup spot, go cruise, go ride, go hit some trails, especially if you don't live near the trails, this is great. You just throw it in the back of your car, pull it out. It's real easy to get in and out of your car. Like I said, you've got different areas. You can grab it and lift it. I find this a lot easier to get in and out of my car than I do my electric unicycles because those things are just crazy heavy. I actually have a dog ramp that I used to get those in the back of my car. This, you just lift up, plop it in, and you're good to go. If you have a small truck, you know, just throw it in the bed. I'm pretty sure this would even fit in the trunk of a, you know, small to mid-sized car pretty well. Another thing that I found was great on this was going up hills. One thing that I always hate about riding one wheels is you get any type of steep incline and your nose is going to hit and you're not going to make it up the hill. This thing, I haven't had any issues with any of the hills I've thrown at it. In fact, this thing was able to make it up a number of hills that I tried to ride the one wheel up, my GT, and just couldn't make it up. I would get about 80% of the way up the hill and my nose would start scraping and I'd hit haptic feedback and I was done. This thing, just give it a little more throttle and it'll suck you right up the hill. All right, so one thing that people have mentioned a lot was how wide your stance is on this. And your stance is a lot wider than it is on a one wheel. On a one wheel, your feet are probably about 14 inches apart. This, your feet are about 28 inches apart. A lot of people are uncomfortable with that. I at first was uncomfortable with it, but after riding it, I just got back from putting 26 miles on it, and I'm no more sore than I was riding a one wheel for 26 miles or an electric unicycle for 26 miles. I find that it's really comfortable once you actually get on it and ride it. The suspension, and we'll go into a little bit more detail about the suspension, is pretty soft, but it's solid and it really does do a good job of sucking up all the bumps and stuff in the road. I was hitting manhole covers and large cracks in the pavement, you know, stuff that's six, eight inches wide, stuff that I'd think twice about hitting on a one wheel, and this just goes right over the top of it. You feel it, but you hardly feel it. So one of the things I love about it is you've got three wheels. You've got one in the back, two up front, and one of the things that I noticed is when you're cruising along, you've got all three wheels on the ground, it really holds you down on the ground. You feel super comfortable on the thing. And I had no issues at all with stability when I was riding this. It felt super planted. And one of the things I noticed is the faster you go, the more stable it is. Again, you've got that rear wheel and it's doing like a gyroscope effect like you would on an electric unicycle or on a one wheel. And it helps to maintain your stability and keep you upright in a way that a skateboard's not gonna do. With that one rear wheel, it just, really keeps you planted and firm and comfortable on the ground. I know I've ridden a couple of e-skates. Uh, I'm not a huge e-skate guy. Uh, I've ridden a few. I do own one. And every time I've ridden those, I, you still feel planted, you still feel comfortable, but I feel this is working actively to keep you upright as you're cruising down the road. So one kind of downside is it's got a pretty wide turning radius. Now, you do have the option of getting up on one wheel. So if you were to do a wheelie, you know, just go up like this, get that rear wheel up on the ground, you've got whatever turning radius you want, like a UC or a one wheel. And eventually, once you ride it, you start to learn how to do that. And I've noticed I was actually doing it subconsciously, riding a couple single track trails this weekend. I was cruising around through corners and you just get those wheels up off the ground a little bit and you get a little bit better turning radius. So that's one thing that I noticed with it. However, if you're gonna keep all three wheels on the ground, you do have a pretty wide turning radius. I haven't measured it, but it's pretty wide. And then one of the other things, uh, as far as riding it goes, I, I noticed that the throttle was a little bit touchy. So once you get used to it, it's not bad. I was able to ride it, like I said, I rode 26 miles the other day and had no issues with throttle control. But when I first got on it, the throttle is a bit touchy. I feel like it could probably do with a better controller and throttle combination to give it that smooth feel that some of your higher end e-skates have. However, that would also increase the price. So let's talk a little bit about safety on this thing. One of the things I noticed, uh, if you go to Tiltboard's website, there's tons of videos of the owner riding 
without a helmet, without shoes, without proper safety gear. Personally, I'm not the type that would do that. Any video you see of me riding this thing, I'm going to have all my safety gear on. Part of that's because I'm old and I'll break if I fall down and hurt myself. But I will say this is a very, or at least it feels like a very safe board. I've talked a little bit before about nose dives. I'm in a bunch of one wheel groups. That's kind of my bread and butter. I love riding one wheels. If you ride long enough, you're going to go down. You're going to nose dive. I've nose dived. It's not fun. I hate it. And that's probably the biggest downside of riding a one wheel. Electric unicycles, they cut out. They nose dive also. The best thing about this is you can't nose dive unless you hit a huge curb on the front and manage to flip the thing over forward. You're not going to nose dive on it. You're going to be able to hit the throttle. And just like on an e-bike or a scooter or an e-skate, once you get to that max speed, once it's got nothing left to give, it's just going to keep going. And with three wheels, you don't have to worry about it. One thing I noticed is where you're standing on it, when you've got your feet down here and back here, your center weight is just in front of this rear axle and in between both axles. So that really helps you out again with stability, it lets you just kind of stand at a standstill at a stoplight or something like that. So I think that this is a very safe board. And again, it's super stable, no speed wobbles. I have not had any type of issue with any type of speed wobble where I felt like, oh, I'm going too fast. I've even felt that on e-skates before where you start to get uncomfortable at speed. This, you don't feel at all. You feel super planted. You feel locked into the board. You feel one with it, which is exactly what I'm looking for in a PEV. Now, one thing that I've noticed is on this throttle, you can kind of see it, it hangs out here and it's kind of, kind of tough to tell because this thing is big, but where that throttle's at, there have been a couple of times where I've been getting on the board, getting ready to mount it, or I'm just standing next to it and the throttle will catch on like my belt or go around my shirt and will kind of start to go forward a little bit, which is a little bit scary. I've never had it get stuck. There have, hasn't been any issues with it binding up or anything like that, but I have noticed a couple of times that it's lurched forward on me and I wish there was a little bit of a better throttle system to you know, kind of keep that in check. Then one of the other things that I've noticed is this thing's got a pretty standard drum brake that you would see on older cars or older motorcycles. One of the things that I noticed when I first got the board was this brake right here wasn't set up properly. I went to squeeze the brake throttle, uh, the brake lever, and it would let me brake a little bit, but it wasn't actually stopping the wheel. It just took a little bit of adjustment, which wasn't a big deal. I would like to see either a hydraulic disc brake setup or a engine braking setup, like you would see on a more modern electric skateboard. So I want to get into a little bit of the tech tech specs on this thing, the specifications. So we'll start with the tires. So the tires are a pretty standard Kenda brand tire. There's nothing special about them. They're the, the nice thing is, is they're pretty standard sizes. So you could swap these tires out for pretty much whatever you want. The nice thing is, is it's put together pretty simply. So it wouldn't be very difficult to pop these wheels off, get the tires off, swap out tires. If you wanted street tires, if you wanted more knobby off-road tires, I will say, I haven't noticed any issues with these tires. I've never gotten stuck. I haven't had any issues with grip on dry pavement or anything like that. And the tires do feel pretty good. The one nice thing would be being able to adjust uh, your roundness on your tires. So these tires all have a pretty standard round profile. But you know, when you switch a GT from your stock tire to an aftermarket tire, like a, a float life tire or something of that nature, you get a little bit more uh, ability to, you know, kind of wobble back and forth. And that's because that tire profile is a little bit more round. These have a pretty standard tire, but it would, uh, the nice thing is it comes with these stock tires, their stock sizes, they would be easy to swap out. And if they put better tires on them from the factory, it would cost more money to get you started riding right out of the gate. And you wouldn't really have that customization available to you. So we're going to go under the board here real quick. We take a look at the controller. So the controller is just a standard e-bike controller. Uh, it's rated at 72 volts, it's got 84 volt battery. So I do like the controller. It seems to work fine for what it is. One thing I'm not a big fan of is a lot of uh, the wires are exposed down here. The benefit is if one of them gets pulled, you're not gonna nosedive, but the downside is, is they're exposed to the elements. Mm. 
One thing I did notice is there's a lot of waterproofing on the wires themselves. And I have ridden through some pretty wet conditions and have not had any issues yet. One of the nice things about having that controller as well is you're not running into any proprietary locks or software locks or things like that like you'd have on a one wheel, even on an electric unicycle. You can modify this however you want to. If you want to swap the controller out for a VESC module, you can do it. If you want to run a vampire battery where you're running a spare in your backpack or you want to slap a spare battery up there, you can do it. You just got to plug right into the uh, XT90 connector and get everything connected together, charge them at the same rate. And one of the other nice things is you can swap this battery out. The downside with this battery, it's a little bit big. In order to swap it out, you'd probably have to pull one of these um, control arms off to actually remove the battery from the case here. And you'd probably have to pull these bands up front uh, to remove that. So move on to these bands. So I will say this is a very ingenious way of creating suspension. However, it's got some pretty serious flaws also. In my most recent and actually only crash on this, and I'm going to show you a video of it now, I was cruising over some like whoop de doo type of section on a single track off-road, and there's no dampening in this system. So it really allows you to get thrown up and down on the board when you're going over really, really rough terrain quick. It's fine for slow terrain. It's fine for the one-off bump, you know, here and there. And I haven't had any issues in grass or things of that nature either. But going over those whoop -dee sections, I definitely wish that I had some dampening on the shocks. One thing that I would like to see is possibly an upgrade to, if not a full regular suspension with dampening system, would be at least some springs or something of that nature. Because I can see these rubber bands are probably going to wear out quicker rather than slower. So the nice thing is they do include additional bands for you to get everything connected and set up. And like I said, for 90% of my riding, 99% in fact, I haven't had any issues with the suspension. I would expect to have to replace those bands though eventually. So a little bit more on the battery. So the battery is a 75 volt nominal, uh, tops out at 84.1 volts and drops down to 72 volts at empty, or at least that's when I started seeing a major drop off in performance and decided to call the uh, range test. It's a 20S 7P with 18650 cells. They don't list the specs of the battery on their website, and I have not pulled this thing apart yet. I wanted to keep it stock for this review, and then I'm going to be posting another 500 mile review once I get to that point. But once I'm done with that, I'll pull it apart and we'll take a look, see what's inside the battery, see if they're Samsung or if they're LG or if they're some other type of off-brand battery. So looking at the motor case, I wasn't able to find any specs, at least nothing stamped on the motor. I know a lot of e-bikes and that type of thing will say, oh, it's a 1500 watt hub motor. I don't have any specs in the motor. Uh, I haven't had any issues with the motor. Like I said, it'll take me up to 35 miles per hour and it's got a lot of torque it will easily get that, those front two wheels up off the ground with just the throttle at a standstill. No problem. I haven't had any issues with power, uh, but I can't say for sure how well this thing would hold up in long term, and I don't know the actual wattage rating on the motor. And again, going back to the controller, one thing that I would like to see is an option to go wireless on it, which you have. You can pull that controller off, swap it out with a VEST controller, and run a e or a e skate you know, remote control with it. And I think that would work great. And I think that would alleviate a lot of your brake woes because you no longer have a mechanical braking system. You could set it up just like an e-skate where you're slowing down by using the controller and hitting your brake and engine braking. The other thing this thing's missing is regenerative braking. So you can't slow down and expect it to push your battery life back up. And I think you'd probably push a couple more miles out of it if you had that. I did find myself using the handbrake quite a bit at low speeds. You don't really mess with it, but once you get going at higher speeds, you definitely need to hit that handbrake to get yourself to slow down. So that's my review of the uh, TLT Runner. All in all, I've had a blast with it. I've been going out, going on group rides with one wheels, going on group rides with the UCs. It takes a little bit of time to get used to learning it. It took me about two or three days before I was comfortable getting up past about 10 miles per hour on it. To be fair, I was only going out and trying it out for about an hour at a time, and it was freezing outside, so that drew me back into the house pretty quick and kept my muscles a little more tense than they would be. If you've ridden any type of e-skate, you'll be able to jump on this thing and get it down within a couple of hours. 
If you haven't ridden an e-skate, I would say three or four hours and you should have it down. It's a lot of fun. It's great for off-road. And in my opinion, if you don't own any type of PEV yet, and this is controversial, I say go out and get a one wheel first. If you already own a one wheel or you already own an electric unicycle and you want something else, I would suggest looking into this, especially if you have a little bit of know-how, a little bit of mechanical knowledge, a little bit of an idea how electric vehicles work and how electricity works, how the motor works and coordination with the, you know, the throttle and the electronic speed controller and the battery, because this is an amazing platform. I feel this really is just a diamond in the rough. It's a awesome design, but it needs a little bit of polishing before it's going to really be ready for market and somewhere where I think you could just, you know, I would flat out recommend everybody go out and purchase one. But if you love PEVs, I would say that it's a good buy. It's a fun buy. And especially for the price, $2,500 won't even buy you the flagship one wheel anymore. It won't buy you a flagship Leaper Kim or Bagode wheel. $2,500, you're getting the flagship board from TLT board. And it's a blast. It's fun. I've had nothing but fun riding this thing. And I know that uh, if you buy it, you will enjoy it too. So if you're interested in buying one of these boards, you just go to tltboard.com. That link is down below in the description. If you want to save 5% off at the Float Life, make sure to use coupon code RENOWHEEL or you can click on the link down in the description. Again, Shred Lights, if you click on the link in the description and use coupon code RENOWHEEL again, you'll get 10% off there. And if you're in the market to buy an EUC, Make sure to click on the link in the description. Check out what EUC Co. has to offer, or UCO, I believe, as it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, they've got a great selection of EUCs, great customer service, and they're awesome to work with. Again, if you want to buy any of my merch, hit up renopropulsionlabs.com. We've got all kinds of cool t-shirts and stuff for sale. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video, um, I've got the unboxing. I've got the range test. If you go on my shorts or my TikTok, I've got tons of videos of me riding this thing. It's been an absolute blast. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.